contracts, energy, and the bauxite value chain. Why Jamaica doesn't smelt more. The Red Gold Paradox Jamaica's Red Hills hide a treasure that built industries across the world. Bauxite, the ore that makes aluminum. From airplane bodies to smartphones, Jamaica's Earth fuels global progress. But here's the question. Why is the island that helped power modern industry still exporting raw material instead of producing the finished metal? Every year, Jamaica ships millions of tons of bauxite and alumina abroad only to buy back finished aluminum products at a much higher price. Despite being one of the world's top producers of alumina, Jamaica has no aluminum smelter of its own. It's a paradox rooted in history, economics, and contracts signed decades ago. Today, we explore the real reasons Jamaica doesn't process its own bauxite, from costly energy to powerful foreign companies to legal deals that still shape Jamaica's mining destiny. The Birth of Jamaica's Bauxite Empire The story begins in the 1940s, when foreign geologists discovered Jamaica's rich red soil held one of the highest quality bauxite deposits on Earth. By the 1950s, companies like Alkin, Kaiser, and Reynolds Metals poured in billions to extract the ore. Within a decade, Jamaica became the world's leading bauxite exporter, supplying the United States and Canada during the post-war industrial boom. But the fine print of those deals mattered. These foreign giants didn't just mine the ore, they owned the entire supply chain. They mined in Jamaica, refined some alumina locally, but smelted aluminum overseas in places like Canada and the US, where electricity was cheap. Jamaica became a raw material hub, not a manufacturing power. The government collected royalties, but control stayed abroad. And that's how Jamaica's red gold, once seen as a gateway to prosperity, became tied to contracts that ensured the most profitable stages of production happened overseas, the 1970s revolution and its consequences. In the 1970s, Prime Minister Michael Manley made a bold move, introducing the bauxite levy, forcing foreign companies to pay more for Jamaica's natural resources. It was a move of sovereignty, an effort to reclaim national wealth. But the reaction was swift. Several multinational corporations cut back production, delayed expansion, or restructured contracts to protect their profits. Many agreements signed afterward gave these companies long-term export rights for alumina. That meant Jamaica couldn't simply redirect its output to new local smelters. Much of the alumina was already contractually committed to foreign plants abroad. Even today, these legacy agreements continue to shape who buys Jamaica's alumina and where it goes. Manley's reform was historic, but it also exposed the island's dependence on foreign capital and technology. Jamaica gained more revenue in the short term, but lost the leverage to independently move up the value chain. The energy barrier. Turning alumina into aluminum requires an enormous amount of electricity, up to 13 to 15 megawatt hours per ton. For comparison, that's enough energy to power thousands of Jamaican homes for a day. Countries like Canada, Iceland, and China built their smelters near massive hydroelectric dams or coal plants, giving them cheap, steady power. Jamaica, on the other hand, relies mostly on imported oil for electricity. This makes energy costs in Jamaica among the highest in the world, a fatal disadvantage for aluminum smelting. Attempts to attract investors for local smelters in the 1980s and 1990s collapsed once they calculated the power bill. Without cheap electricity, no smelter could compete with the global giants. So while Jamaica's alumina refineries, like Jamalco, Alpart, and Windalco, continue to operate, the final, most profitable step of the process remains out of reach. The country exports alumina, while the aluminum is produced and profits realized overseas. The contract trap. Another quiet reason Jamaica can't easily move into full processing lies in joint venture agreements and ownership structures. Most alumina plants are co-owned between the Jamaican government and foreign companies. For example, Jamalco is a partnership between Jamaica Bauxite Mining LTD and Noble Group slash Alcoa. Under these deals, Jamaica can't unilaterally decide to build or expand a smelter without partner approval. Furthermore, the contracts often include offtake clauses, where the foreign partner has exclusive rights to buy and export the alumina. That means even if Jamaica built its own smelter, it might have trouble securing enough locally available alumina to feed it because the product is already committed by contract. These clauses, designed decades ago to secure investment and stability, 
now act as invisible chains. They keep Jamaica tied to an export model, where the island earns less per ton of bauxite than it could if it controlled the full aluminum cycle. Environmental and Social Concerns Even if Jamaica overcame the legal and energy hurdles, environmental issues pose a serious question. Aluminum smelting produces massive greenhouse gas emissions and industrial waste, especially red mud, a toxic byproduct that's already a problem from alumina refining. Building a smelter would require large waste storage sites, stable power grids, and strict environmental monitoring. Many Jamaicans already criticize the industry for deforestation, dust pollution, and community displacement. Expanding into smelting could intensify these challenges and ignite public resistance. So, even as the government pushes for modernization, it must balance economic development with environmental protection, a tension that complicates Jamaica's next step in the aluminum value chain, breaking the chains. So, what would it take for Jamaica to finally process its own bauxite? Experts suggest three major breakthroughs. First, cheap renewable energy, possibly from offshore wind or natural gas, to power a smelter competitively. Second, renegotiation of legacy contracts, giving Jamaica more freedom to use its alumina locally. And third, new industrial financing, possibly through partnerships with non-Western investors interested in Caribbean resource development. There have been talks over the years, including from Chinese firms like Jisco when it acquired the Alpart refinery, about building a full smelting operation. But the plans have repeatedly stalled due to high costs, fluctuating alumina prices, and regulatory barriers. Still, the dream isn't dead. If Jamaica can align policy, energy, and investment, it could finally move from being just an exporter of red dirt to a producer of finished aluminum, capturing the full value of its natural wealth. Jamaica's bauxite future. Jamaica's bauxite industry is a story of ambition, control, and unfinished potential. The island helped build the world's aluminum age, but remains stuck supplying the raw material. Decades-old contracts, expensive electricity, and foreign control have kept Jamaica from completing the circle of production. But as the global economy shifts toward clean energy and local manufacturing, Jamaica has a rare chance to rewrite that story. If it can free itself from the past, both legally and economically, the island could finally transform its Red Hills into real national wealth. The question is no longer whether Jamaica can process its own bauxite, but whether it will seize the courage, investment, and political will to do it.